Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash I don't work here, lady. And today is another great day to tell three new great stories. IDWHL Walmart Adventure. So this only happened a couple hours ago at around 9 p.m. I had a crazy craving for Brock's Conversation Hearts. You know, the little candy hearts that taste like chalk that nobody seems to like, but I'm that weirdo who does. Well, after having visited four stores, I'd almost given up until I made my last ditch effort, which was to go to Walmart, since I hate going to that store. I did have some other shopping to do, but unless I had the hearts in my hand, I wasn't going to grab a cart. I managed to find a guy who actually worked there, and he was really nice and showed me where the hearts were. I grabbed five bags since I'm a sugar fiend and headed off to grab a cart. After grabbing a cart, I was grabbing some other stuff like you naturally would do at Walmart. Prior to leaving, my mother had asked me to grab her some cookies, so I'm at the bakery taking pictures of them and sending them off. When I grab whatever items I'm going to, I always grab the item from the bottom of the bag because in my mind, I always think that not as many people have messed with it. While I was at it, I did try to make the table the cookies were looking on look a little bit nicer for the next person. I walk over to my cart, which was right next to where the butter was. This Walmart's really weird and small. I was looking at my phone and jotting off what I still needed there. No less than five seconds later, I hear a very loud, excuse me. Now I'd not looked up because I foolishly thought that it had nothing to do with me. When I heard it again, I began to feel a little frightened, but still kept my head down and pretended to be an ostrich. The third time, what followed that banshee cry was a forced shove of my cart into the gut. Here's the exchange. I will be me and crazy lady will be CL. CL. Finally, you look up. I need help finding something, and if you didn't look down at your phone so much, maybe you'd actually do your job. Me. Look, I don't work here, lady. I literally said the name of this sub to her. CL. Yes, you do. Don't lie. I cut her off at this point. Look. I'm wearing a picture of two disco balls, and each of them are on my boobs. Do you see any other employee who has disco boobs? Do you? While I was saying this, I pulled my jacket back so you could see that I indeed did have disco balls on my boobs. Well, you were just stalking that table there. Why else would you clean it up? Well, maybe I did that because I'm a decent person. By this point, the cool employee who'd helped me find the candy had walked up and asked what was going on. And before I could answer, she told him how lazy I was and that I should be fired. He told her again that I didn't work there. And after hearing this, she actually swung her hand as if to knock down all the butter on the shelf. But instead, she hit her hand on the actual metal shelf. Her cries of pain were so loud it nearly shattered my eardrums. I stepped back. So did the employee. We were both afraid to do anything. Now, this caused quite the commotion and other shoppers started looking She clutched her hand and stooped all over, saying, She did this to me. The security guard who'd been at the front of the store came over and didn't have an ounce of sympathy for her, told her that since she was disruptive to the other shoppers and she'd purposely tried to destroy merchandise, she could either leave willingly or he would physically escort her out. While she was walking out, she began calling all three of us every name in the book and kept screaming to have me fired along with calling corporate. I was apologized to and offered a discount, which was nice, but I declined. I was just so happy that this experience was over. It had felt like a bad dream. I'm now home in my bed, typing this out while eating my candy. Well, I hope she does try to call corporate. And then when they investigate, they can ban her from the store. And our second story. Maybe you should take that stick out of your vajayjay. To give some backstory, this happened nine years ago during the summer when I was still a 17-year-old post-high school introverted, important later. I had a girlfriend, now ex, terminated on bad terms, but I digress, who at the time was going through her monthly cycle. Having just finished my shift as a receptionist for a pediatrician, first job, helped me get out of that introverted shell by the end, I was on my way to visit her several towns over and was asked to pick up a few feminine products. Now, working in a pediatrician's office, I obviously know about menstrual cycles. However, that doesn't mean I was not embarrassed to walk through those aisles as a kid. 17-year-old me said, what the hell, I'll man up and do it for her. Now, to be fair, I'm dressed in a deep maroon polo and khakis. I drove to the nearest Flargate, took a deep breath, and walked to that scary section. 
Unbeknownst to my younger self, I was lost in the sea of products, and what better thing to do than call my girlfriend and ask which one I needed to grab? Me. Hey, I'm at the store. Which one should I be getting? I whispered. Girlfriend, clearly in pain. The ones with the wings and medium-sized tampons. Me. What do you mean, the ones with wings? Girlfriend. Ask one of the workers there. And then she hung up. Me. Wait, but... Now, luckily, slash, unluckily for me, there was a college girl, CG, judging by her voice, who was nearby and heard my embarrassment. She came over as I was panicking, looking at the array of products, and asked if I needed help. Me, without taking my eyes off the two products in each hand, managed to stammer, I'm supposed to get the ones with wings and tampons. College girl. Well, I'm pretty sure your girlfriend isn't going to need that one, pointing to the super-sized tampon, unless she has a cave down there. Me, finally realizing I'd grabbed the wrong box, oh, yeah, uh uh-huh, you're right. Now, if this wasn't an IDWHL post, I would have exchanged the products and hurried my way out of the store. But alas, it is. CG proceeds to discuss with me, eyes still glued to the products, which products I should be buying, etc. As I'm conversing with CG, enter awful 40-year-old bat. AFB. AFB. Excuse me, you shouldn't be working in the women's section. This is an inappropriate section for you to be working in, young man. Me. But I don't... AFB. Don't talk back to me. Where's your manager? This is outrageous. Me. I'm still peeing my pants because I don't know what to do. Ma'am, I don't... Before I could get in another word, college girl chimes in. I am the manager of this store. My eyes finally peel off the pads and tampons in my hands and look up at CG in shock. I notice she's also wearing a red polo and has a very gorgeous complexion. Having now gone from peeing to crapping my pants now. AFB. You need to remove the... CG. First of all, ma'am, any gender is capable of working at any section of a department. AFB. You can't talk to me... CG. Nuh-uh. I'm not finished. Second of all, he is a customer and can damn well shop where he pleases. Third, maybe you should take that stick out of your JJ, and just maybe you would be nicer. I have some healthy and comfortable supersized tampons right here for you. AFB. How rude. I can't be treated this way. You you just lost a customer. She stormed out and I turned to college girl. Oh God, I'm sorry I caused all that trouble for you. And now you lost a customer. CG. I don't actually work here either. But I'll be damned if I'll let a sexist pig get away with that kind of remark. So we finished our conversation, shared a few laughs. I thanked her for her help and covering for my embarrassment. As I was walking away to leave, she yelled, If all else fails, buy some chocolate and throw it from afar. I'm just kidding. But seriously, buy her food. As of today, I'm a lot better dealing with strangers and understanding there's pads with and without wings and different sized tampons. I suppose that'll help me whenever I find a girlfriend again and have a funny experience to share. And our third story. I just want to fish too, kid. This happened a few months ago, but has come up in Thanksgiving conversations, so I figured I'd share and give people a possible laugh. Standard warning. Longtime lurker, first time poster on mobile, so sorry for formatting. So I'm obsessed with fish. Not like eating fish, but pet fish. Sadly, I was in the hospital for an extended stay, and my large tank had no one to care for it properly, and I lost all my buddies. Over the summer, I started to build up my community again as I normally do, buying fish on a whim. In the marts of walls by me, they have a small selection of fish. I was there with my mother when I first realized this, and she agreed to buy me a small pleco to replace my 16-inch pleco that had died in the tank at her unskilled hands. I'm picky about my fish, so I'm looking intensely for the healthiest looking one, which was hard because all the fish there were surprisingly healthy. There wasn't a designated fish worker, so I was told it'd be five plus minutes before someone who knew what to do could come by. Okay, fine. I'll just look at some other fish. So a young boy around eight or nine comes up and is absolutely entranced. Seeing his joy and knowing it myself, I ask if he had any fish. He didn't. He was looking at getting some tricky saltwater fish, so I offhand mentioned he might want to start with something a little easier. 
He asked a few questions, and I helped him narrow in on a few choices. He then asked me to wait until he came back with his mom and ran off before I could tell him I wasn't a worker. A few minutes later, he comes running back with his mother in tow. She's smiling as she sees me and thanks me for watching her kid because she didn't know where he was. He then starts telling her everything I had just told him about the fish, and the mother is seriously considering getting him some. Another few minutes come by, and a worker comes up to tell me that the fish person was delayed and apologized. No big deal for me. I'm excited for my new tank mate. He walks off, and then the mother is right in front of me, the boy bouncing on his toes behind her. Can you help us get a new fish? I don't know anything about them. Huge smile. Of course I can. I tell her all about cycling a tank first and how you should really do that without fish. She gets the son to agree to wait for fish so that they can be healthy, and we set off down the aisle to pick out a tank and decorations. I'm reading the different tank kits, explaining to her and the boy, and I help them choose the best one for the type of tank he decided on. Freshwater, semi-aggressive for anyone wondering. I help them get the proper water conditioners and even explain the foods for when they did get fish. So they're all set, supplies in the cart, and I wish them luck. Suddenly, the lady stops and asks me my name, so that she can tell the manager how helpful I was. Fish guy's finally getting there just as I tell her I didn't work there. She looked ready to cry as she thanked me for being so helpful and even offered me money for taking a good 15 to 20 minutes to explain everything to them. I didn't take it. I got my special little pleco and wished the kid good luck on his fishy journey and set off to find my mother and some ice pops. Sometimes people are a-holes, but for every a-hole is a curious little kid and his grateful mother. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.